Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over two possible tropical storms, both of them in the eastern Atlantic, especially Invest 92L I think has a better chance of forming. We're going to be talking about which one of these uh, are most likely going to form, we're also going to be talking about how strong they may get, and also the track that they're expected to take, and a few other factors as well. One uh, just update for the longer range videos which are going to be coming out in just a few days. Starting on the 9th through the 15th we're going to have a bunch of long range videos. We're going to have 7 of them uh, and that will be kind of a long range forecast week. If you have any questions on any of those topics uh, then you can just leave a comment down below on either this video or those videos when they are released. All of them will come out at 1pm Eastern uh, and here's the schedule that, I'm, uh, that we're going to upload them on. On August 9th uh, we're going to have the August forecast on the 10th we'll have the fall forecast the fall full foliage forecast on the 11th the winter forecast on the 12th the total snowfall forecast on the 13th the the first snowfall forecast on the 14th and then we're going to have your first frost forecast on the 15th so that's the schedule Again, if you have any questions on any of those topics, leave a comment on those individual videos. I'll be responding to all the comments within a few hours of you guys posting them. So let's get right into it here and let's start off with your current National Weather Service page. You can see that we have a few uh, air quality alerts which are scattered throughout uh, parts of the West, also into a little bit of Minnesota uh, and Texas as well. So kind of just scattered all over the place where we have some of those air quality alerts currently in effect. We have some red flag warnings in effect for parts of the Northwest, so that includes parts of Montana, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, and California, with some excessive heat warnings and heat advisories in effect for parts of Arizona, Nevada, and California. We have some flood watches for uh, parts of northern and southern jo northern Florida and southern Georgia, as well as for eastern Massachusetts and uh, pretty much the entirety of Rhode Island. Yesterday, we had a high temperature of 126 degrees in Death Valley, California, with a low temperature in Petersons, Utah of 33 degrees. The highest rainfall reports in Beaufort, uh, North Carolina, where they got uh, 4.78 inches of rain, and there were no snowfall reports as of yesterday. Here's a look at the current five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center page. Now, just to give you an update, uh, you probably haven't seen any uh, hurricane videos on my channel, I would believe in probably two or three weeks, maybe even longer, because there really has not been any development. There was a good seven to ten days, maybe even longer, where the National Hurricane Center was not tracking any storms, and then just in the past two or three days is when they started to put up uh, some, uh, some advisories out for these storms where we have now two storms to track uh, and there are many more out in eastern Africa which are going to be moving to western Africa and then eventually into the Atlantic that we're also tracking that are in the very early stages of development so I think we probably have in total four or five storms that will come out over the next month or so uh, and maybe even more just based on what we see out in northern Africa uh, and even further uh, to the east in Asia. Eventually, those will be moving uh, into the Atlantic. We have our first disturbance, which is labeled Disturbance 2 on their website. That has a 0% chance within the next two hours of forming, and within the next five days, it has a 20% chance. I would not rule this one out, even though uh, they only have a 20% chance for, uh, for it to develop. I still do think that they will probably put out, uh, put this up maybe to a 40% chance within the next couple of days. They usually like to stay on the lower end of things and then as you get closer to the event they push up the numbers just a little bit uh, whether it will become a tropical storm that is possible a few of the models are showing that although it doesn't look too likely as of now and also if it were to become a tropical storm look at where it's going over it's going to barely clip uh, parts of the lesser Antilles and then it's going to be moving uh, further northeastward into the Atlantic, so not really, not re uh, not too much population within that area, except for this little island chain right here, which it may interfere with. But other than that, it doesn't look like it'll have too big of an effect once it passes over that area. Then we have Invest 92L, which I think is a bigger threat, considering that it's still over Western Africa. It's actually fairly has actually has a fairly high chance of developing. Usually, you would wait; uh, they would wait a few more days to actually put out that. 60% chance of development usually that would, they would wait until this is at least off of Africa but they're already uh, kind of uh, jumping uh, jumping the gun here and they're already putting out that 60% chance uh, over the next five days of this developing 
And that is the one that I think probably has a better chance of forming. But again, that one would also be going out to sea, and it would probably make a, a track somewhat like this based on the upper air pattern that we currently have in place. Taking a look at Invest 92L in a little bit more detail, you can see it's currently over Western Africa, located 11.5 degrees north by 10.5 degrees west, maximum winds of 23 miles per hour with a minimum pressure of 1,013 1, millibars, uh, and we don't know the movement just yet, just because it isn't a named storm as of right now. So that's the, uh, that's the surface analysis of this storm. Taking a look at the forecast a track you can see that we're expecting this to be moving fairly west northwestward so uh, it'll be moving pretty much in a straight line west northwest uh, and it's going to be moving just south of cape, the cape verde islands and then moving again continuing to move further uh, uh, further to the northwest again this is moving over the open water so we'll have time to develop but that also is good news because it means that it probably won't interfere with too many land masses uh, as it's going through the atlantic there's only a few islands Islands out in the eastern Atlantic that would be in uh, that would have risk from the storm uh, and in general the eastern Atlantic is fairly wide open not a lot of uh, land until you get basically to the lesser Antilles and points westward that's when we start to get some more island chains but other than that the eastern Atlantic and the northern Atlantic don't have too many land masses through there so if it moves into that area not really a big deal considering that it's just going to be a fish storm out to sea nothing really uh, no, nothing really too uh, damaging or impactful. Looking at the intensity guidance, you can see that this is expected to become a tropical storm by pretty much all the models except for one. So all about four out of five models, that would be around 80%, are showing that this could become a tropical storm within the next 48 to 72 hours or within the next two to three days. Uh, we'll continue to track this storm for you guys. Uh, we're going to have definitely a lot more updates on this channel, probably another one or two, maybe, maybe even three, depending on how intense and how long the storm sticks together. Taking a look at the satellite imagery, you can see that that first storm is starting to die out a little bit. That's the one that's further to the west right here. So this one is starting to die out just a little bit, but you can't really see it on uh, the satellite. We don't have, I believe, we don't have any satellite in uh, the uh, pretty much the east, uh, the the areas in Africa, in Asia, and. Europe, we don't have too much good satellite data from there, so we're not able to really see what this storm looks like from above. Uh, using the GOES satellite imagery, this is the best we can see. This is the easternmost view I could find, uh, and you can see that it uh, you can barely show it barely shows there in Western Africa. But that is your storm right here. It kind of is curving off uh, right there just because of the spin of the globe, so you can't really see it too well. Uh, this is the best I could do in terms of trying to see uh, this storm. It does look a little bit more pronounced when you look at the infrared, uh, which is just showing you the cloud tops and how high they're going. Uh, the more vibrant the colors, the stronger the storm. So you can see that we have that first storm out here, not too strong as of right now, but it still can definitely develop. It's in favorable waters. And then we have that storm out in Africa, which does again look fairly, uh, it does look fairly uh, wrapped together. It does look fairly good as of now. Uh, especially when you look at the infrared satellite imagery, uh, it does look a lot more defined. And again, because of the uh, satellite view, we're not able to get a good shot of this. But I think the infrared does the best; uh, the, it gives the best view, uh, and it really can stand out on that uh, on that view instead of the regular satellite imagery. Taking a look at the, ch uh, the the chances of development or the chances of this becoming at least a tropical depression, uh, you can see that we have fairly high chances. The European model, uh, the European ensemble models usually are on the lower end of things. So even if this storm, uh, which it does look like this will at least become a tropical depression, even if it has, let's say, on most models, a 90, 95% chance, the European ensemble models will probably still have this at 50, 60, 70% chance of development. So usually they're on the lower end of things uh, in terms of the development of these storms so you want to probably tack on 20 or 30 percent onto whatever they show on these models so uh, you can't really take them verbatim but it does show you where the development path looks to be so you can see that they are expecting the storm to move off of africa and then start to move further to the west and then eventually after that you would see a curve further up to the north 
if we look at the uh, if we look at the amount of dust, uh, the Saharan dust a uh, in the atmosphere, you can see that we do have some amount of that over Western Africa. So that might hinder develop uh, development just a little bit. And then we also have a little bit more uh, in through the Eastern uh, Atlantic as well. It will have to pass through here. Uh, it's not too much uh, Saharan dust, but I think it will maybe mess up the storm just a little bit. Could cause some uh, some uh, complications within the storm. If we move on here to the upper air map, you can see that this uh, is also uh, fairly favorable for storms going out to sea and not really making land impact. The reason is uh, because we have this high pressure to the north. This is gonna this high pressure will be moving further south, uh, but still it's so far to the east, uh, mainly due to this low pressure out here. This is breaking up this high pressure. So uh, in most uh, scenarios, you would have a big high pressure steering right uh, right right around here. It would be steering these storms right like this so we'll be moving into the uh, Caribbean and then eventually up into the East Coast that's how we usually see these storms develop depending on how far east or how far west uh, these storms are that can definitely play an impact on whether we see these storms move up the East Coast or move into the Gulf of Mexico uh, but usually we see the high pressure just being one big air mass what what's happening now because of this uh, right here is that it's breaking it up so we have a weaker uh, air mass right here and a weaker one also also uh, to the east so now the storm has kind of a pathway that it can follow it can move right in between these two and move out to sea and not really have to impact any land masses and that and that's what it looks like it probably will do so this would be by uh, Friday night into Saturday morning on the upper air map and then looking at the upper air map for Monday, you can see that this is a much different high pressure setup than we usually see. You have a broad area of high pressure over this entire region uh, right here, but it's not really acting like that. So technically, that would be a full area of high pressure. Uh, but in reality, we, we mainly have one high pressure out here, and then we have a bit of a high pressure, a bit of ridging out further to the west. So this storm, which by this point is down here, uh, it does have the possibility to just move right in between these two and move into the northern Atlantic without too many issues and then probably by that point it would be picked up by the steering winds and moved off further to the east so that's the general track that this could take and it looks like that is probably the most likely uh, although again we really don't know what's gonna happen with this high pressure if this stretches out a little bit more if it becomes a high pressure that looks a little bit more like this then this can uh, kind of go further to the south and then eventually move up to the north but again that looks unlikely as of now I would say the biggest or the highest uh, threat would be this moving out into the northern Atlantic which is good news considering that there isn't really anything out there uh, except for maybe uh, Bermuda but that's a very small uh, island and it would be hard for the storm to really hit that usually Bermuda is actually quite safe from these considering that it's only a few hundred miles wide so it is a fairly small target and most storms are able to miss it so let's hope that happens with this storm as well Taking a look at these sea surface temperatures, you can see that these are going to be uh, good enough. It, anywhere where you're in that yellow or orange, where you're above 26 degrees Celsius, that's where you're above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And typically, that's the benchmark. When you want to be above 80 degrees Fahrenheit to get development, you can see that pretty much the entire Atlantic, except for this little area right here, is above uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And the storm will be moving entirely, for the most part, over 80 degrees Fahrenheit plus waters, which is good news. Also, that first storm that we were talking about the one that's currently over here does have the shot of developing it is getting impeded by a little bit of saharan dust but the really warm waters if it can move further west and it can survive a little bit longer it does have a fairly good shot considering that we have really warm waters and if we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, these are actually warmer than normal. So you're going over warmer than normal waters potentially. That is definitely going to help out the storm. And also, looking at the amount of ocean heat content, uh, both of these storms will be going over a fairly high amount, especially that first storm. It'll be moving into an area of high ocean heat content, uh, which is good for this development. Uh, it's definitely not good for you know everyone else because we, we don't want this storm to really develop, so we don't see any uh, damage. But... 
uh, if you want this storm to develop, that would be good news because it's going over a uh, high amount of OHC, which will help this develop a little bit more. So that is going to wrap up for today's video. Again, uh, just an update. I will be releasing my August forecast on the 9th, the fall forecast on the 10th, the fall foliage forecast on the 11th, the winter forecast on the 12th, total snowfall forecast on the 13th, first snowfall forecast on the 14th, and the first frost forecast on the 15th. Uh, and if you have any questions on any of those uh, topics, leave them whenever uh, leave them in the comments of those videos when they do get released. I'll be answering all of those comments. If you have any questions for today's video, also leave a comment down below, and I'll respond to all of your uh, questions and comments uh, so again leave comments down below and also if you enjoyed the video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye